everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and we're going to be learning about some Warhammer 40k, everybody's favorite topic. But before we do, if you enjoy today's episode, or you just enjoy Adeptus Ridiculous in general, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and consider supporting us. You get uh, bloopers if they happen uh, at the $15 tier. There's the HD posters, access to the Discord, lots of great stuff. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, how about books and merch? Book, we gotta read Bloodlines. Great book, good mm. book, all about the noir detective stuff, but with Warhammer Code of Paint, love it. Mm. And then the merch, do remind, it is Black Friday. It is full on deals and stuff there are not one not five not even 10 but 11 of our old school posters currently available as well as mats little objective marker mats to play your games with as well as dice shirts and hoodies and so forth and if you buy two things or more you get 20 percent off your order all the way until the end of the year there's um been a couple couple absolute giga chads who have been like oh wow it's i see that that ridiculous is bringing their old posters mm -hmm. out and um and we're just like hmm i'll take eight and wow I'm like, I'm like okay all right i guess i'm printing eight posters for this person it's like oh. I'm, the great devourer the the conqueror's abs the sh the sh oh. okay so all right, so so out of all of the old po posters, top top five most sold. What do you think? Uh, gotta be gotta be the Lataris or in Conqueror's abs. Um, I think you already told me that the Great Devourer was up there. Um, got to be the uh, Gray Saint one, where the two of them are just in a loving embrace. Oh, man, after that, it gets tough. Um, I would also say the Bone Zone and the Eldar one, because those are kind of saucy. Mm, interesting. So Conqueror's Abs is number one, definitely. Way then to go, it, crew. Then it is the Bone Zone, which Necron Supremacy, wow. proud okay. of all of you. I wasn't expecting Bone Zone to be two. I, I was number two. The Great Devourer is on its heels at three, which is one of those ones I'm kind of mad about because it's like it, Tyranid Girl, it's but it's also like... I told you so. It's a very good art piece. And then after that is, in fact, um, Celestine and Greyfax followed just a hair, currently by one, the Shadow Sun one, which I hope stays far below yeah, the the Shadow Sun one is a little surprising, actually. Is you it? Know? I mean, is it's it a you, great art piece. You great and your fucking piece. and your fucking uh, Tau Ab shit. You're surprised it's low. Well, the thing is, the Shadow Sun one doesn't have any Tau Abs. It's it's a it's a pretty respectful, like full armored Shadow Sun. Like she's looking badass, and maybe that's why, because it's just a great art piece of a great Tau. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Well, there it is. I well, that oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. All right, all right. Are you ready for your quote, DK? No, but do it anyway. All right, that's got to be the greatest pirate I've ever seen. That's got to be the greatest pirate I've ever seen. That's, that's the quote. Mm hmm. Um, is, is, is this an orc episode for the free Buddhas? Cause actual, or, well, if, if it was an orc episode and it was a free, you, you'd give me an orc quote. All right. All right. Here, here's a, here's a different one. All right. Okay. Here's a different quote. Okay. 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 <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so you have heard of me. Oh. So you have heard of me. Don't you um, worry, DK. It's all... Today, we're doing a Disneyland episode. We're talking all about the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Oh, boy. Except the ride is... 
You know, I was thinking about, I went to Disneyland recently and I was thinking about the, the we're doing the Imperial Navy, but I was thinking about the idea oh. that if you did the, uh, if you did the damn Pirates of the Caribbean ride, but you did it all 40k like, and you're just like, <laughs> oh shit, the Geller fields are going down and all the pirates just start like having, getting 40 eyes and start rolling around being crazy. Oh, that would be great. The, um, I, I, I am not a Disney, Disney, uh, we're getting off trap topic. Shy's not bit. even he Shy's not even here, so she can't even post yeah. to get on with it. Me, you know so what? Honestly, she, she can't. So let's just be off yeah, topic you, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know. Let's do this. How about new? No? Anyway, we're doing the Imperial Navy. Hooray! The Navy. Ho Hooray! We can sail the seven seas in the night. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, you know, I I can't even do the damn SpongeBob reference. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> nope, you can't. Squidward, the seen. robot's taking over the Navy. Not the Navy. Fuck. All right. Uh, we're doing the Imperial Navy. The Navy. The Navy. So, one of the major, actually, like, like enormous branches of the Imperium that we have not talked about, and arguably, probably more important than the Imperial Guard, um, because they, you know, like, move the guard places, I guess, yeah. you know? Yeah, very, very do. important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, is the Imperial Navy, the Novice Imperialis. It is a very, lo lots of lots of stuff involving this. The, the main thing to note is that next episode, after we chat about it a bit, we will have our good friend Kirioth over to talk about the vessels of the Imperial Navy. Oh, and he will nice. mainly be talking about Imperial vessels because holy Christ, if we were to do all the Xenos ones. Yeah. <laughs> now, remember, Bricky, you have told everyone that Karyoth is going to be here next episode. So don't let it come as a shock to you if at the intro of the next one, I mention Kyrioth. It's not really You're a right. spoiler, right? That is true. I will forget okay. when you tell me again. Okay, okay. Cool. Um, but the Imperial Navy originally was this overall encompassing group, of course, as the Navis Imperialis, which was split up into various sectors and subsectors following the uh, Horus Heresy, kind of the classic, um, like how all the Space Marines were swapped into chapters, so none can, if they revolt, can really hold a whole lot of power. Yeah. yeah. Similar kind of deal with that. Okay. Now, the first ships of the Navy were built way back in the orbital foundries on Terra. And then they moved on to the Mars Ring of Iron. You remember that mm -hmm. Ring of Iron thing, that giant yeah. like Halo. Um, then there's shipyards on Saturn and so on. The, the main thing that made the real strength of the Imperial Navy was the Martian Alliance with the Emperor way back when. Mm -hmm. Which is the only reason it all allowed to work as well as it did. Emperor was like, I'm leading a great crusade. I need a ton of ships. Let's work together. A ton of ships. Build your stuff. Classic, classic. Yeah. Got it. So, cool. the Imperial Navy is split into five segmentums. They are the Segmentum Solar, Obscurus, Tempestus, Ultima, Pacificus, Atlantius, and Indius. <laughs> GW is just so creative with their naming schemes. I just... Oh, oh, I was joking. Oh, man. See, I mean, I'm so used to stupid GW names that I was like, yeah, that sounds right. Yep. Oh, I, oh I, no. I, so, no, mm -hmm, I ended at the mm -hmm. Pacificus. I said there are five, five segmentums. Solar Obscure, Tempestus Ultima, Pacificus. Those are the five. But after Pacificus, I just went with the other oceans. Yeah, I, I, I totally believed it, too. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I can see GGW being that stupid. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pacific Kiss is, uh, is enough, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so each, fortress, each one has a fortress dedicated to the Imperial Navy, a gigantic production and shipyard. Uh, for example, Segmentum Solar is the one that incorporates Soul System and Terra and stuff. So naturally, Mars would be their main fortress. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And each segmentum is then cut down into... Because each segmentum is generally like the entirety of the Milky Way, I'm pretty sure. Wow. And then each... I'm assuming that's how it's split up. I might need yeah. to double-check double, double check the map, but... The um, map. They are the, the map. They are then cut down into various battle fleets. 
and their job is to safeguard the sector they are assigned to. Uh, for example, there is the Gothic sector, which I has... I was about to ask, is that like Battlefleet Gothic? <laughs> exactly. Gothic? Ah, like the game! Yep, Battlefleet Gothic. And so there will also be like a Battlefleet, you know, Cruises or Battlefleet Obscurus or... Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a, that's a Segmentum. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and each sector that the Battlefleet is assigned to is commanded by an officer known as a Lord Admiral. And they have Fancy major title. control over that whole thing. Um, a battle fleet is normally around 50 to 75 main vessels, which are mainly battleships and cruisers, along with tons of squadrons of support craft and fighters as well, including all manner of other things like transports, messenger crafts, orbital defenses, space platforms, and so on. Damn. So to be a Lord Admiral, you got to be, like, really hot. Like, you got to work your way through the city. Like, that's a that's a high honor. Like, how does one become Lord Admiral? Um, well, there are two. The Lord Admiral, I'm assuming it's the classic rise through the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one more rank above the Lord Admiral. Uh, well, sorry, there's the Lord Admiral. And then there is the Lord High Admiral. Uh, I believe that the Lord High Admiral is actually the one that manages the segmentum. I am going off memory. I will sure. double check, double check my notes. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Lord High Admiral, also known as a battle fleet commander. Lord High Admiral is the highest commanding rank of the Imperial Navy. Only five of these individuals exist, each for one segmentum major. Let's fucking hey, go. I was right. You were right. Way to go. You Let's got go. great memory, sort of. Sort of. Uh, yeah, I, I was right, but also unsure. Yeah. Um, well. There is one higher than him, the Lord High Admiral of the Navy. He is the guy. Mm -hmm. um, he is the one who is on Terra. He is a High Lord of Terra. Uh, I guess it makes sense that the Lord High Admiral would be a High Lord of Terra. We don't chat much about the High Lords of Terra before. We really don't. No, they, they are... The High Lords are, are rather interesting. Um... They are, they, you might have seen, you might have seen them because uh, in the Emperor text-to-speech thing, they kind of use their PNGs of them to make fun of them as old men because they, they look like they, here, here's what they look like. They, they are, they are an interesting group. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, this is a bit of old art, but it's like, Wow. I mean, that's great art, but yeah, they are, their skin is like hanging off their bones. Well, except the ad mech. Well, yes, naturally. You know, no skin. Is that, who is that? Is that Belisarius Call? That's the only, that's the only like big time ad mech dude that I, I know. So, uh, Call? Not, not currently, no. So the, okay. the, I guess we'll, we'll probably have an episode on this one day, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk a teeny bit about this. Um, okay. The High Lords have nine uh, offices that are always a High Lord, which is the Master of the Adeptus Administratum, a representative of the Inquisition, the Ecclesiarch of the Administorum, the Fabricator General of the Adeptus Mechanicus, which is ah. not Call, it's what Call is gunning for, the <laughs> Grand Man. Provost Marshal of the Arbides, which is like the Judge Dreads. Um, the paternal envoy of the navigators, which is actually something that's important because the navigators and the navis nobilite to pilot a spacecraft, to pilot the navy, send mm -hmm. navigators out to the navy and allow them to um, to work with the military. Master of the Astronomicon, uh, the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum, who is Ooh. a problem person. Uh, yeah, I would imagine that the head of the assassins, uh, yeah, I could imagine them being just ever so slightly problematic, sure. And then the master of the Adeptus Astro Telepathica. Uh, however, there is a, a bunch of other High Lords as well, and these are often Imperial leaders. Example, the Lord Commander of Smenctum Solar, the Lord Commander Militant of the Astra Militarum, the Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy. Hey! Anyway, uh, the Lord High Admiral is a High Lord of Terra uh, in the Imperial Navy, and the various ranks kind of cascade along with that. 
Um, actually, funny and interesting note, the uh, rogue traders were originally, way back when, meant to scout ahead and provide information for the fleet. Um, oh. They've kind of adjusted their role a bit now, where they might scout ahead and get information, but that gives them a whole lot of, like, personal responsibility, mm -hmm. which kind of makes them start doing things like trading and, and relations <laughs> and, and getting money. Oh, no, and not relations. Relations. And they might swap that cash for, uh, uh, for information, which they bring back to the Imperium for more cash and th mm -hmm. things like that, you know? Cash. Capitalism. Okay. Hell yeah. The, the rogue traders are... The closest you will ever get to making your own decisions in 40k. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And not having everything done for you. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, these battle fleets that I mentioned uh, with the 50 to 75 battleships and cruisers are then split up into battle groups. Normally, one or two cruisers or a battleship combined with a bunch of escort craft. Okay. Okay, um, nice little escort, nice little flotilla. Yeah, a little, little flotilla. I believe yeah. battle groups are generally how you fight in the game. It's like one battleship and then some cruisers and some escort craft, you know? Oh, you um, mean in, like, uh, in battle fleet gothic? I believe, yeah, like, the actual kind of fight itself is a um, is a battle group, because you're not commanding the entire battle fleet, so many right. ships. Um, so, the... Imperial Navy vessels are something that we will probably cover much more with Kirioth, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I wanted to just kind of go over each of them in a, in a little light bit. So you have the classic battleship. Okay. The battleship is gigantic. It is <laughs> e-fucking-normous. 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 It is so big. Um, they, they, no, they, they range pretty heavily. Like, there is the Apocalypse-class battleship and the Emperor-class battleship and the Invincible-class fast battleship and the Retribution battleship. And wow, there's blah, something blah, bigger blah, than the Emperor-class? I think it would actually be the Apocalypse-class. Jeez, how dare they do the Emperor like that? I believe the Emperor-class... Well, the Emperor-class might be the biggest. The Apocalypse one might have been something that's a little bit, like, side note. Oh, okay, because I was going to say, how how dare you besmirch the Emperor by making a class of ship bigger and grander than than the namesake of our Lord? The, the namesake of our Lord, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, so, the yeah, the actual, like, size of these ships uh, can range quite heavily. Uh, there is this classic image that often shows the various types of uh, of ship size. So that top one is the retribution class battleship. Wow. And then that's a you've big got <laughs> Yeah. And you've got cruisers and light cruisers. And I believe the uh Covenant of Blood was a strike cruiser. Oh. Okay. So is it's, it's a respectable ship. I mean it's you know, it's no retribution class, but it's a you know, it's God, that retribution class is insane the it is it is genuinely like laughably large that's that's like a, a spacefaring city um there are other things like the gloriana class battleship mm -hmm. which is just i believe that's the one the primarchs were given gloriana class battleships okay um there are the emperor battleships there are bat battleships make up the, the gigantic fuck-off ship that is then used in order to basically have all the other cruisers and stuff surround it. As it's like, you know, you have your big centerpiece, basically. Yeah. Um, and then past that comes down into the cruisers. And the cruisers are the main source of the battle fleet. It is... Um, Oh god, they're, they're they're like grand cruisers, battle cruisers, regular cruisers, light cruisers. You've got <laughs> Avenger class, Exorcist class, Vengeance class, Armageddon class, Dominion class, Long Serpent class, Mercury class. It's a lot. Wow. It's a lot. They are they are the main line ships of the Imperial fleet. Like, for example, the um, a, a battleship can range in size uh, bet between up to eight 
kilometers long. <laughs> okay. Um, and they shit. can house between 25 to 3 million people. <sighs> so they're like floating countries. They are floating countries. They are wow. enormous. Actually, they could be floating continents. Often they don't even, uh, often they have like these gigantic, heavily armored prows, not just for the armor, but because they will literally ram you. Yeah, yeah, that makes, oh, that's the, there was some ramming in the, um, what book? Oh, no, that was the Necron book where the Necron ships were like ramming shit, so I guess that doesn't. It's just the orcs, I suppose, too, where they just hit the big red button and they go vroom. <laughs> they go vroom, yeah. Um, the best way you generally deal with a battleship is to somehow board it, because if you notice, <laughs> the entire side of it is guns. just guns. Yeah, <laughs> it is It is armor-plated with guns. And then, um, and so with that, you, have, you obviously have the cruisers that kind of surround it, and then you have escort craft that tend to surround that. These are ov often frigates, destroyers, corvettes, uh, yeah. pretty, mostly frigates. Um, okay. which are the little smaller okay. ones. So, and even that little picture of Shy Post, like there's the, the battleships, uh, the, the top, and then you've Whoa. got the cruisers, <laughs> the grand cruisers on the right, and then cruisers on the bottom right, and then more light cruisers in the bottom left, and then there are some frigates in the center and little stuff like that. There are also off, obviously a ton of attack craft. Fury oh, interceptors are the big ones. These are like three man genuine like you know they're starfighters yeah, yeah um yeah. there are starhawk bombers other interceptors i mean these battle cruisers spit them out like like a nurgle infested death guard spits out <laughs> flies like you just have the battle cruiser and then just from it you see this gleam of thousands of craft just start leaving its ports like a like a hive of bees mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my god. This sucks. Well, that's true. I guess if they're that big and they can hold that many people, they can probably hold a lot of uh, a lot of starfighters too. Like Shy posts rowboat gorilla man's ship on the front, and I just see the the immediate like um Oh the, uh, what, the what is it like a, I don't want to say a rosary, but the, the wreath. Yeah, the the little wreath on, on the on the head. What are those things called again? Wreath? Uh well, well, isn't there like a name for like the little, the little like um, leaves that you put on like by your oh, ears and stuff? Yeah, I'm sure there is. That's a what do I want to say? Is that a Roman thing? Olive wreath. Oh yeah, okay, olive wreath. Oh, then. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You were right, wreath. Hooray! Oh, hooray! Um, but anyway, that is the the large makeup of a battle fleet, or even just a, a, uh, a battle group would be the big destroyers surrounded by cruisers, surrounded by escort craft full of, full of fighters. Mm -hmm. As for the Navy ranks you have, because, you know, a whole poor part of the Navy is the people in the Navy. No uh, way, really? Listen, listen, I'm just using it as a segue. I'm you decaminating. You can't have a Navy without people? I'm, okay. I woke up for this. Woke up. Woke up this morning and shows violence. <laughs> violence to me. Yep, I sure did. All right. Um. So there is the like I said, the Lord High Admiral of the Navy, the High Lord of Terra. The Lord High Admiral contains and controls all of uh, each individual segmentum. There is the Lord Admiral itself which is the one that generally requires uh messing around with the battle fleets themselves oh yeah their uniforms are, are it's pure drip it, it is it is absolutely old school like 18th century ships you know obviously mm -hmm. and look at all those medals that this guy's got holy jeez the lore high lord high admiral is the five of them that have the, each segmentum the lord mm -hmm. admiral or sector commander is the naval operations for a sector. There's also a solar admiral, which is a little bit less common, more for reinforcing fleets or special duties. Um, but then there's also the admiral, which is the allocated command of a portion of a sector's fleet. The okay. vice admiral, which, you know, and then there's the rear admiral. He cleans the poop deck. <laughs> uh, we rear, poop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're 14. Yep. Uh, and then, of mm. course, there's the Commodore, Lord Captain, and then, of course, there's a Captain. And Captains are obvious. They are the 
they are the captain of the ship. There is uh, the commander, a lieutenant, midshipman, and so on. There are also a bunch of warrant officers too, like the shipmaster, whose entire job is to make sure the ship is moving smoothly. The gun captain, which is a very important officer, yeah. entirely in commanding a gun crew of an Imperial warship. So they basically are like a gun foreman to sure. how, because in order to reload, because if you're, if you're reloading like a torpedo on like a, a destroyer, <laughs> the torpedo is the size of probably like a small bus. Maybe bigger. Depending probably on bigger. which cruiser, yeah. So you need to, so your, your gun captain probably is going to be like managing 50 people. You got to have them working together. Oh yeah, absolutely. Maybe more uh, than 50, but like with, with the size of some of these ships, like you're, you know, you're probably ordering around a small city. There is also the sergeant at arms, which is entirely based on working with charge, uh, squads of armsmen. Uh, these mm -hmm. are the general troops that move around either to board other people or in order to uh, protect against borders. They're entrusted with all of the weapons lockers and stuff per deck and allow mm -hmm. them to help clear each deck of uh, possible hostiles. And then there is the bosun or boatswain, uh, which are like taskmasters and disciplinarians. Oh, um, okay. Which leads us into the main crew of a ship, the classic raiding. I, I had to- Raid? Rage, raid shadow legends. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, if if we get a raid shadow legend sponsor, I'm buying that damn Astraeus tank. And then, and then I, I will I will put the stamp the stamp oh down and I'll buy that damn Astraeus tank. So if you ever if you ever see a Raid Shadow Legends sponsor on this channel, just don't <laughs> don't think, damn, they sold out. Think, damn, I can't wait to see that painted Astraeus tank. <laughs> can't wait to see Bricky's Astraeus tank. It's gonna be dope. So um the raiding. So a raiding is the name of the enlisted voidsman. A, a, a raiding. raiding. Yeah, a raiding. Yeah, I know, right? It, it it took me a second to figure that out, but a rating is the name of the crewman. Okay. The rating is a basic voidsman whose entire point is to take care of lots of menial tasks. We're talking hauling shells, cabling stuff, removing debris, maintenance, tons of different kinds of subclassifications for these ratings, different kinds of classes like this person is the fuse changer. This person is the gun loader, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, a lot of them also make up the bulk of the crew and will do a lot of the fighting when a boarding action will arrive. Um, however, this might surprise you in the Imperium. Most ratings are volunteers. Really? The pay is very decent, uh, more than you'll ever make in a hive city. And the conditions are a million times better than most Imperial worlds. You are also serving on one of the God Emperor's, like, God machines. True, but it's a very dangerous job. Like, you you need to deal with the borders. Like, you are going to see combat almost guaranteed. And your life is on the line against, like, Xenos, uh, Orcs, uh, Nids probably like eldar that oof, that's that's a rough job i mean the conditions might be good but the uh mortality rate has got to be not grand well the the main thing to note when it comes to this is that remember despite the fact that we are in a galaxy of nothing but war you will not always see combat you know because th think about like think about how long you might survive on a ship. If let's say you are one on one of the cruisers in some part of some sector that just might not see much combat, you might live fifty years on this ship and not see any combat. Maybe now it's a bit unlikely, sure, yeah. but whether or not you see combat depends on whether, like, who are you combating? Because ninety percent of the time. The Imperium is killing itself. True. Uh, I, I would imagine, like, current time with the Cicatrix Maledictum splitting the universe wide open, you probably see a lot more combat now, though, right? Like, and you're going to be fighting all sorts of bullshit. Um, this, uh, yeah, it's, I wouldn't it's volunteer more... for it. <laughs> Me well, personally. Well, 
Well, think about it this way. Um, you might see combat, but you might not be bored it. You know? True. You might not be. You might just be shoot, doing classic, yeah, you know, loading guns and things. Yeah, loading shells and just doing the media. That's true. That's true. But here's the thing, though. You say, like, oh, you don't want to volunteer for it because of... Yeah, it, it's certainly hazardous. Like, yeah, you're going out in the Imperium and that kind of stuff. But here's the other question. Where do you live? Is where you, li or is where you live better? I, I mean, I guess that's true. There's so many, like, radiation cursed planets that barely have a hospitable uh, surface on them. And even if it is hospitable, uh, you know, it's, it's probably turned into a giant hive city where you literally can't make a living because the population is overwhelming. And yeah, I, I don't know. I guess maybe. Uh, think of it like this. You, there are a lot of things that are important when it comes to a job, like, like a real life job, right? Sure. It's pay company fulfillment of uh of like what you want to do and, and a few others but the pay is good it's way better than any other thing would be so you got okay pay yeah um the company you keep you know who knows what your life on the hive city was but you are going to be working with fellow men and women who work hard on a spaceship like that, that could certainly be that cut level camaraderie Mm -hmm. You have no issues in what you're doing. You are serving on one of the Emperor's glorious naval vessels. Like, Something you to are be proud of. Stoked. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you get shore leave. You could spend all your money on various planets you go with. You're, you know, you, uh, you're probably not seen. Like, you, you're not going to be seen like the Americans were in, in Japan post World War II or anything like mm -hmm. that, where, where it's not seen well. Like, you are going to chill at some uh, shore leave in some planet, and you are going to be a major rating on an Imperial vessel. People are going to like you. That you are you are going to get laid, most likely. <laughs> well, when you put it like that, sign me up. Like like glory be, be the emperor. A, get that tall glass of slanoosh. Oh yeah. Well, Not hey, anymore. That's all you had to say. Oh, well shit. That's well, all you shit, had to say. That's all you had to say. We can't yeah, do the exact shit. quote because No, we cannot. My lawyer has advised me not to continue mm -hmm. this joke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. But anywho, uh the actual rating has a ton of different jobs. And, and yeah, they're mostly volunteers. They they sign up, much like you sign up for the Imperial Guard. Um, there are voidsmen and armsmen. The uh, the major rating, of course, but a voidsman is generally an enlisted crewman that have some kind of training or skill, Condu uh, conduit maintenance, repairs, polishing, mm -hmm. so on. Uh, there is also the armsman, which is you know, uh, it, you could guard the captain, you can guard the bridge, you can, uh, you know, just stuff like that. You mean they're not in charge of the crew's literal arms and making sure that everybody's working out properly? Man, I would love to know if there was like a personal train. What would a personal trainer look like on a on an imperial vessel? They oh. probably be they probably be some kind of ecclesiarch person, like oh yeah, gains for the god emperor. <laughs> <laughs> One day together we can lift the golden throne. <laughs> anyway, there are also plenty of other specialist ranks. You have the tech priest majoris. You have your classic senior navigator. You have your Masters of Ordnance, Master a Gunner, your Surgeon, you know, your com there's a Fleet Commissar often, there's often a Confessor, which mm -hmm. is there to promote the Imperial Creed, you know, God, sure. Emperor, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all in between the ludicrous level of firepower weaponry these things have. Um, <laughs> yes, they do. Just, just insanity. Because that's the thing, is every single gun that we talked about on a Titan is insane, but these are on ships. These are larger. Yeah. Well, because they're, they're they're for void battles, and they're on these absolutely colossal spacefaring ships. So, yeah, they're probably the size of a Titan sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, there are also a large amount of other workers. Thing is, is that not everyone might volunteer for work on a uh, on a on a ship. And be, if your if your classic battle cruiser but has between 25,000 to uh, 3 million people <laughs> you may need some extra crew maybe so yeah. so what do you do you, you go 
Whoa. You make your you make your way <laughs> down to that, that's the sound of the ship, you know. Okay, I was like, damn, Bricky, you know, you just went completely static, right? <laughs> I thought your Discord was malfunctioning. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of that. Wow. Hey, listen, not everyone can be as cool as me, okay? That's true. You know, hey, hey. You make great ship sounds. Don't let anybody tell you different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh anywho. Um the past passing <laughs> moving past that hole. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> Um, the, the, sometimes you might just need more crew. So you will go find yourself a beautiful hive city or perhaps a penal colony and be like, get on the ship. Ah, forced labor, eh? Oh, indentured servitude makes up a massive portion of the Imperium's ship crew. You gotta have someone work on that plasma reactor that gives you radiation. You got to have someone dredge. You got to have someone shoveling coal, you know? Mm -hmm. Do they ever, I mean, I guess they probably wouldn't, but do they ever worry about, like, indentured slaves, like, causing problems or not doing the job rights or anything like that? Is there someone that's always watching them to make sure that they're not doing the fucky wuckies? Oh, absolutely. You will have okay. ma many crew die due to... Uh, accidents issue because they'll crawl into a vent and they'll just get oh. asphyxiated they'll lose a limb uh or sometimes they even died a disciplinary action like the commissar or something yeah but uh yes that image that shy posted is indeed how they reload their torpedoes a <laughs> gigantic amount of hundreds of slaves moving the torpedo there there are wow. there are literally yeah there are literally gangs and societies that are formed around reloading guns. Wow, that torpedo is enormous. Holy yeah. hell. I, I, I love the guy that's in the front that just got his arms up like, faster for the emperor! I, I yeah, that's, pretty, that's, that's a good image. That's a good image. What a interesting idea. What if you create like a, like a drama, like The Wire, but it's but the gangs are literally which gun port on the <laughs> battle cruiser you're in. Yeah, which gun do you reload? It's like I uh, yeah uh, we we over here at at gunpoint point starboard A five really fucking hate port B seven and we're gonna <laughs> kill them in a gang war. <laughs> and then the commissar comes and then kills all of you in the because you killed the other crew in the gang war. Yep. Damn, that is a crazy image, though, of reloading that torpedo. That's insane. And and they just you'll go to a you'll go to a penal colony, you know, and you'll just grab inmates and stuff. You, you will take your tithe for the Imperial Navy, and they will just do what you tell them to because they have to, or they die. Yeah, you could probably take a whole penal yard and just put them on different uh, torpedo ports. Just take probably. all of them. Most likely, Damn. yeah. I mean, there there is entire societies formed from. I mean, the the lower decks, as you can tell, they talked about it plenty in the Night Lords books. They uh, the oh, black yeah. market, mm -hmm. this entire market formed from just the lower dredges and dregs of a of a Astartes cruiser. Yeah, it's a whole yeah whole civilizations down there. Jesus, it's certainly an interesting vibe having the Imperial Navy because. For all the insane power and fear that the Adeptus Astartes might have, they are stuck in a ship. Yeah, they are. They are indeed stuck in a ship, just going from place to place. Yeah. And if you and, and a normal ship of normal crew that are not Astartes based can blow them out of the sp of the world. I was gonna say out of the sky, but out of space. Yeah, out of the void. Yep. And like it can just happen, and That's... the the competency of the captain and, and commander and the crew is all hinged on that entire uh, you know that, that entire those engagements, which is, is why those stories are scary. Yeah, is is like a, a whole ship of Astartes could get blown out of the water out of the sky by just not Astartes, yeah, because that... the other captain was better at void combat. 
that that is exactly why um the Astarte ships, which are often called battle barges, do focus mainly on enemy boarding actions. <laughs> they focus on putting the Astartes in a drop pod and landing them in your ship because holy shit, how it's... are you going to deal with that? <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're going up against the non Astarte ship and you let like three Astartes board, it's like it's it's over for the Humi ship that has, you know, no space brains. Yeah, you you've got a you've got a difficult problem on your hands <laughs> very um, very you can absolutely take them down perhaps maybe you have some admech cataphrons or just some well-placed gun emplacements mm -hmm. astartes are powerful but if you have enough auto guns in one spot that's they're not immortal know, they are not immortal they strong but not immortal yeah uh, and that yeah so it's like it's much better to just get them into your ship so okay. you, that's the number one thing you got to be careful of when you're fighting the Astartes is to keep your void shields up and make sure they don't get their shots on. Because once those <laughs> shields pop, here come the drop pods and you yep. have a... And then you're really screwed. You have a big problem on your hands. Mm -hmm. Oof. So uh, besides that, uh, the other thing to really note is things like the Inquisition. Um, the Inquisition will often, while they make demands of the Militarum a lot more than the Navy, they can obviously use the Imperial Navy as a source of transport. Often oh, yeah. smaller vehicles, frigates and stuff, because no one can really prep a battle, a fucking battleship for five days just to get it up and going to have yeah. Mr. Inquisitor go a planet over. Unless you know? it's a really important Inquisitor. True, but I think they would prefer not to anyway, because the Inquisitors like to um, move post haste. Ah, okay. Well, that's you know, true. They, they're they're Inquisitors. They, you know, they've their time is money. I got to do my thing. Yeah, that's fair. They uh, and and, and you know, it's a um, it's the Inquisitor. While people don't necessarily like having them on board because they're creepy and they and they scare the shit out of them, mm -hmm. um, the Inquisitor is, of course, as we always talk has the utmost authority out of everyone ever in the Imperium, but <laughs> it's always good to be careful with how much you try to stretch that power. Yeah. You don't it's, want someone stabbing you in the back because you're a douchebag. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty bad idea to walk up to the captain and saying, I'm in command of this crew now, as the captain standing on their raised da dais and the 100 crewmen kind of turn their heads to you like, what did you just say to me? Yeah, and they're all like pulling out their las pistol. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's like because you you have to you think about the uh, mindset that goes in your head right there. It's like this is my captain. I am loyal to a T, mm -hmm. and I know that this Inquisitor, despite having the power they do, will not crew my ship as well as my captain can. Yeah. Oh, captain, my captain. And because of that. Um, if I let this Inquisitor get away with what they're doing, and the captain does, I my life can be measured in days, depending. Oh yeah. And so how many how many oh, times no. does this happen? I mean, I don't necessarily know, but it's more of like oh, okay. a thing to state. Right, right. And it's like, oh, the Inquisitor might end up with a knife in their back. Yeah. The uh oh yes, the Inquisitor in Dark Tide travels in a light cruiser. The the oh. tiny cruiser is our ship. Oh in dark. shit! Really? <laughs> yes, the Morning Star oh. is a is a light cruiser. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> well, that definitely puts the size into a little more perspective because the Morning Star is massive. It is very big. Holy shit! Okay. Okay. The um yeah the, it's it's impossible to truly show the grand scale of these ships like mm -hmm. it's like when you see a Titan you at least have a bit more of a reference to how it is because of, you can see the people on the ground but a ship is so high in the air like you just it, you can only compare it to other ships which is yeah. hard to truly get again a real grasp on how fucking big these things are I mean I guess you could try comparing it to like how big it is next to like a planet or a moon but I mean that's a planet that's a celestial body like <laughs> yeah it even still doesn't doesn't quite do its job there yeah yes oh my god shy okay so there is a US uh aircraft carrier mm-hmm on that above 
photo, there is a light cruiser, and there oh is the my God. Eternal Crusader. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> that, that, what? <laughs> And, and, oh, okay. So, so, so this Eternal Crusader is, I'm assuming, a battleship. It is 3.56 kilometers long. Do not forget that some battleships go up to eight. eight. So they will be double the double. length. Double. <laughs> oh my God. That's silly. The, like, the carrier is smaller than some of the just normal spires on, on the Eternal uh, Crusader. That is Yo. insanity. Yo, whose side are you on? Are you on the Bloods, also known as Gunport A14B3? Or are you on the Crips, also known as Torpedo Port 5433? Like that that the Eternal Crusader is like it's a it's a floating continent. It's like floating North America. I wonder how big craft worlds are in comparison. Eldar oh, that's craft right. Worlds. Craft worlds have to be so much bigger because that's like a world. Um, uh, honestly, other than that, the the life on a naval vessel is actually one of the better ones for the Imperium. If you're not a slave, um, <laughs> make sure to reiterate that. Yeah, if you're there of your own accord, there are a lot of issues you have to run into. Uh, you'll you will probably see combat, but you know, like. I don't think you'll be boarded super often. Depends on what you're fighting. Yeah. Um, you we do have to worry about, like, the Geller field, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Got to worry about the Geller field, the warp, demons, you know, chaos. So wrapping it all up, the the Imperial Navy, you know, it's it's not it's not a bad gig. It's not a bad gig. You yeah. have, if you volunteer for it, your life will be hard, as all things the Imperium is, but you have room for advancement. You can become an armsman and then become the, the master at arms. And then who knows? Maybe you'll move even farther to be able to... Who knows? Maybe one day you can captain your own ship. And, and life as a captain is a good one. Yeah. And I suppose if you're just, like, in the dregs and there's not a whole lot going on in your life anyway, you know, you're living in, like, the slums and there's just nothing it's like well fuck it why don't why don't i enlist why don't i volunteer at least then i'll have you know uh, three square meals a day i'll have a job who knows where that yeah so i guess it it could be a lot worse in the imperium it's like hey what are you gonna do you want to keep living on the stromo or do you want to be part of the navy yo oh, god yeah yeah, it's um, it's it's a fine it's a fine job. I'd say that as far as uh, plus also you know you can maybe if you are are some hotshot you can become a pilot because you know oh, yeah, yeah. like uh, aircrafts, Valkyrie transports, starfighters. That's that's all part of the navy, and so you can just kind of you know just just kind of fly yourself an aircraft and have your own have your own fancy fancy Valkyrie that you can pilot around, and it's you know being a pilot's cool. Yeah, you too could be the next Luke Skywalker. Mm hmm. So uh, that's that. Kiriath will be around next time. Uh, next time to talk about the myriad <laughs> amounts of Imperial naval vessels, the armaments that are on them, and uh, and how big those guns can get. Oh man, I'm looking forward to the armaments and just how ludicrous all of those cornucopia of guns can be. What do you? Uh, if you had to name a gang. That reloads guns. What, what would what would you name your gang? Um, what would I name it? Um, oh man, you're just gonna put me on the spot like this. I I I. Oh man, this is this was already like a uh, a really popular. Uh, you remember motocross when that was at like uh, you know an X Games and stuff? Yeah, 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 I remember motocross. Do, do you remember the group that was uh, the, the Metal Militia? Oh my god, with the skull and the helmet? Yes! Oh, dude, I, I, had a, I had a backpack of that when I was in middle school. Oh, back then, the Metal Militia was so cool. Oh, oh I love that, them. That's so, yeah, cool. I'd, I'd go with the Metal Militia. Slap a Imperial Aquila on the helmet, call it oh, a day. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's pretty good. It's pretty, mm. All right, that's pretty good.
Oh, all right, all right, all right, everyone. If you have remembered the Metal Militia, do comment <laughs> below. Allow us algorithm likes and shit because I'm bringing back middle school level shit right now and I mm. love it. All right, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go. I should go. We're going to go. I should go. I should go. I should go. We should go. Rex. Take me home. You fucked it up.